tonight. Amen. I, I uh, uh, don't make me come over and get that. <laughs> He'll be all right. Um, we're talking about relationships. And uh, I, I'll be the first to tell you the most of this material comes from Brother David Bernard, who's our general superintendent. And uh, I, uh, uh, it is a series, and uh, I am not comfortable generally teaching other people's material simply because it's just not as easy for me to follow. But uh, I, uh, as I begin to go through this today, I, there were some things that, light bulbs that went off in my mind. And uh, I, I feel like that I felt the Lord led me here uh, quite some time ago, and I bought the DV or the CD again, and I've run these off. So uh, let's review a little bit from last week. Uh, does anybody remember what we taught about the relationships from last week? Say it again. Thank you, baby. Understanding yourself. Uh, the first key to having good relationships is understanding yourself. And uh, God knew what he was doing when he made you. He knows what he's doing as far as gifting you is concerned. He does not make mistakes. That's right. Nor does he bless us out of pity. Amen. Brother Rice, he doesn't settle. When he, when he picked you, he wasn't settling. He knew what he had. He knew he had a blessed man of God and a, a soldier and a, a vessel, Brother David, that he planned on using. He, he doesn't, doesn't take us because he doesn't have anything better. He doesn't settle. He doesn't make mistakes, but he is our creator. We have one creator and one father, all of us the same. We got to be a hearer of the word and we got to be a doer of the word and nobody can make that happen but you. All right, nobody's ever going to make you live for God. Nobody's going to make you be faithful to church. Amen? Amen. Everybody, everybody needs a come to himself experience, just like the prodigal had in the hog pen. But whether that takes place in the hog pen or not is up to you. If you'll hear the word now, you know, there are people that, Brother David, they're on their journey to the hog pen. But the Word of God is constantly pulling. The Word of God is constantly drawing. And if you'll hear the Word of God, you don't have to hit rock bottom to get straightened up. Amen? That, that is not a have-to case. I, I heard somebody say the other day, I, I guess, uh, I, I don't even remember exactly who it was about, but he said, I guess they're going to have to hit rock bottom. How many have heard people say that before? You, you don't have to hit rock bottom. You don't have to. If you, if you accept and embrace what God has for you. We need to learn to operate as God has gifted us. Some are given ten talents as it was in the Bible. That was, again, that was money, an investment. And some are given one. Everybody's given something and everybody's not the same. If you've been given the one, consider yourself blessed and do the absolute best you can possibly do with it. If you've been given the ten by the same token, but the one doesn't need to try to be the ten. I've heard people say before, the Lord will never let me have millions of dollars because I couldn't handle it. And, 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 and all joking aside, that is the case with many folks. Perfect example is you look at all the lottery winners. How many of you have ever seen that documentary on all of the lottery winners? That the, the biggest lottery winner there's ever been is now penniless. Won over $300 million and blew it all. Lost his family, lost his wife, granddaughter killed herself. He got knocked in the head and stole money from. I mean, it's, it's miserable existence. So sometimes we need to just consider ourselves blessed for where we are. Amen? Amen. Amen. Tonight, relationships. I, I hope, I hope really, and, and this is just steadily moving. I, I believe the Holy Ghost is here not that he's not always here, but the Holy Ghost is here for a reason tonight. I really believe that this seed has got to fall on some good ground tonight. There, there's some things as I was going through this and, and, and my mind working, Brother Terry, I thought, boy, we're falling short. We're falling short. We're falling short in some elementary areas of relationship that God wants us to have. 
Proverbs 18 and 24 says, A man that hath friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. If you have friends, you must be a friend. This is in a little bit different context than what we might be used to. or It's normally viewed, if you want to have friends, you need to be friendly. But the scripture read exactly as it is, seems to point rather to one that has friends, must practice friendship. If you're going to have friends and you've got them, it's talking about one that already has friends. You need to cultivate and let those relationships grow. Or, or basically the consequence of having a friend is you must be friendly. Even when it may not be convenient. Right? Let me think about I want you to think about this. I want you to gnaw on it for just a few minutes. And I promise you, if you zone me out tonight, I may come stand over top of you. All right, and not, not because I'm being mean, but this is so important. It's biblical. It is so important, okay? How many of us, now I don't want, don't automatically, boom, put my hand up. How many of us have true friends? Not acquaintances. Not people that you're cordial to, but true friends. Listen to me, one of the things the church has failed in is that we win people to the Lord and draw them out of their old friendships, bring them into the church, and expect them to survive on their own. How many, how many among us, now there's some of you, I will get all up in your business. I know you. Okay? I know you. How many of you, just think about it. You've got some true friends by the true definition of the word. Not people you're friendly with. But you have true friends. Now let me tell you something before I go any further. Look around you. Carly, I said, look around you, not look down in the seat. <laughs> look around you. What you have, now listen to me, what you have is a house full of potential friends. That's right. Amen. Oh. But the biggest reason why, now I am meddling, I am, but I'm your pastor and that's my job. The biggest reason why that we do not cultivate friendships is because you have to be inconvenienced in order to be a true friend. And we don't like to be bothered. We don't like to get out of our routines. We don't like to have to change our habits. We don't like to have to go places we don't like to go. And so in order to get to do what we want, we don't have friends. It's really uncomfortable in here right now, and that's nuts. Except that I know I'm right on target, and the Holy Ghost wants to fix that tonight. I know we think about the Holy Ghost delivering the wino, and the Holy Ghost delivering from cigarettes, and from gambling, and all them real bad things. How about the Holy Ghost deliver us from ourselves sometimes? Amen. How about the Holy Ghost be allowed to continue to work on us? You know something, Brother Billy? Just because we've got out of the mess don't mean we've arrived yet. Amen. And we're at the place where the Lord is trying to perfect us and to increase our effectiveness. And if this is all the relationship you have, we don't come to church. We need to add a couple nights. Huh? If, if that's all we've got, we need to add a couple more nights of church. If that's all we got. Okay? How, how many think I'm being unfair? Or I'm just way off the reservation? I know I'm not. I'm glad you didn't raise your hand. A measuring stick of true friendship. And, and I'm fortunate that I have, the, I have some of these friends. Okay? Is that when time passes, you haven't seen one another, talked to one another in quite some time. And when you do, 
it seems like you haven't even been apart for a day. Things pick right back up where they were. True friendship is when there's no hope of profit from it. When there's no benefit other than being in their company. We, especially in a smaller community, friendships and relationships are built on such shallow things as popularity, money, influence, etc. other than that of true friendship. In the schools, the children with the most money, the children with the coolest clothes, the children who have the right last name, have people that just desire to be with them. But I gotta let you know they are not friends. Amen. That's right. Come on now. That's true. Let's go to the need and value of friendship. Can I tell you that if you're here and you're here listening to me, or if you're here and you're not listening to me, or if you're here and you're in another world and don't care what I'm talking about, this still applies to you. You gotta be a hearer and you gotta be a doer, right? Right. Okay. Everybody in here needs a friend like what I'm talking about. Everybody in this room needs friends. And you don't have the right to tell people that I don't care about you and I don't want you caring about me. You don't have that right. If, you're, if you intend to be pleasing with the Lord... If you intend to be an effective saint of God. What's the Bible say about companionship? In the very beginning, Genesis 2 and 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet for him. Now, I might have been born at night. I don't even really know. But I wasn't born last night. I know that this is talking about getting Adam a wife. Okay? But the problem, Brother Pete, initial problem wasn't that Adam needed a wife. It's that Adam was alone. That was the problem. The wife did not come from Adam's mind. It came from God's. Okay? This shortcoming was fulfilled by a wife being created for him. But the problem was a companionship problem. And I'm going to interject this right now. Your spouse should be your best friend. But your spouse should not be your only friend. I didn't get that many amens on that. Biblical examples. David and Jonathan. You should have read it when you were reading the bread. 1 Samuel 18, 1 through 4. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Paul that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day and would let him go home, no more home to his father's house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him. Jonathan was a prince, by the way. And gave it to David and his garments, even to his sword and to his bow and to his girdle. After the death of Jonathan, Jonathan 2 Samuel 1 and 26. Now I want you to listen to me right now. I'm going to, get, I'm going to keep on being real tonight. I'm ready for revival. Aren't you? Are you ready for revival? And revival is going to be, the first indicator of revival is that which takes place inside of us. And more souls are going to come in when we get this right. God have mercy. Y'all be amen to me afterwards. Those of you that aren't, bless God. Amen, hallelujah. I am distressed for thee, my brother Jonathan. Jonathan's dead right now. This is David's lament. Very pleasant hast thou been unto me. Thy love to me was wonderful. Passing the love of women. Now, I think I even had somebody ask me one time, this kind of made him nervous. But I want to let you know, Brother David, he wasn't speaking of an eros love or even a filial love altogether, but something more akin to agape. 
which is the kind of love that God has for us. Okay? We have got to get to the place. I feel in the Holy Ghost right now. God have mercy. We have got to get to the place where we have relationships that there's a bond that, that, that is that strong. Listen to me right now. Our world has become so detached. Our world. How many of you got the deal on Facebook the other day, like 30 years ago, that, uh, uh, or, or 20 years ago, uh, it was uh, uh, super exciting to, to get uh, electronic messages. Like it was a big deal. And, and uh, uh, the mail just stacked up. And now you get thousands of electronic messages. But if somebody gets one little letter, they're like, oh my goodness, excited. Look what happened. Somebody took some time. Somebody took some effort. I got a real letter. Did y'all see that? Anybody else see that on, on Facebook? It, what does that really say? Listen to me right now. I know that, that this is important for this church to get. I don't care what the world is doing. If we're gonna be, Jesus Christ had relationships with people. Okay, he built relationships with people. All right, I know what happened at the very end. But there wasn't a one of them happy about getting away from Jesus, Brother Billy. It broke their heart. It tore them up. They just didn't know, really know what to do. And we can't dog them out and downgrade them because we don't know what we would have done either. That's right. Right? But Jesus built relationships. He had to, Brother David, he had to tell people, you cannot go with me. Okay? People wanted to be with Jesus. The world has become so detached and so impersonal. Oh, i got to teach a while. My goodness. I've had conversations lately, many conversations. And I've talked about this, I believe, here in church. But, but I remember when we used to go pay all our bills face to face with somebody. You know? I, I mean, it's a big deal. I, I've heard people, they don't like the fact that their mailman ain't the same all the time. No, they're not. Listen to me. We, we've become so detached and everybody is anonymous now. It's just, it's just people and just going. The church has got to change that. Because there is probably no more desire, more base, more given to us by God than that of need to be accepted, of that of wanting to belong, of that of wanting to be a part of a community. Amen. A sense of community. And we've got to have that here in the church. I, I don't know if y'all are buying this all together, either that or we're really happy being just in our own little world. You know, Wendy could tell you right now that there's people at the nursing home that probably ain't seen nobody that cared about them in 10 years other than the staff there. That's why, how many of you notice when you go to the nursing home that there'll be people shuffling out of their room, grabbing a hold of you, wanting to be friends with you, don't know you from Adam? Does that not happen? What are they wanting? They want money? Nope. They want food? Nope. What are they wanting? I rest my case. They can be out of their mind, not even know who they are, not even know who you are, but they'll respond to a hug. Listen to me now. You'll know I'm telling you the truth. We've got to get, we have got to shake ourselves out of this thing and realize that no man truly, the poet said, no man is an island unto himself. You can't make it by yourself. Relationships, friendship. David and Jonathan had a love. The, the, the reason he used the reference to the love of women is because that, that Eros love, Brother David, is really the, the highest love that we can acquaint to. It was something that David was saying, you know, I really like women. That there's a natural God-given desire to be with women. And he had a little bit of trouble overloading on that, by the way, but that's a different story. But he said, my relationship with Jonathan was different than that. Okay? Then Mary, Martha, Lazarus, and Jesus. Jesus had friends. John 11 and 5 said, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. John 11, 35, 36 says, Jesus wept. 36 says, then said the Jews, behold how he loved him. 
They knew, they were aware of Jesus and Lazarus' relationship and Jesus' response to what was going on spoke volumes to them. Friendship, relationships are beneficial for assistance and strength. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 and 10 says, Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. Perfect example the other day, and I don't say this in any way to make anybody feel bad because I did have opportunity, people offered to help. But I worked here and put that projector in by myself. And I went up and I went down and I went up and I went down and I went up and I went down and I went up. And Brother Manning, it's much more beneficial just to have a helper. I was talking to Brother Johnny, I think it was, or maybe it was Brother Ray. If, if I remember getting to help Daddy, brother, brother Billy, and I thought I wasn't doing no good. Because we know if you're really going to be a true helper, you got to be doing something. All I was doing was handing him stuff. I didn't realize how important it is just have somebody to hand you stuff. Okay? We, we, we cannot be so arrogant to think that we don't need nobody. When, when it's not a matter, brother, brother Billy, of us belittling ourselves, it's recognizing the fact that two people work better to get than one person does. All right? For two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Now this is speaking literally, is it not? This is speaking literally. But there's got to be a spiritual application to that as well. Okay? Two are better than one. Friend, the counsel of friendship. Proverbs 27 and 9. Ointment and perfume rejoice the heart. So doth the sweetness of a man's friend by hearty counsel, by healthy counsel. True friends will tell you the right thing, not what you want to hear. I, you have to forgive me because, I mean, if I pastor here as long as Brother McKinney did, you're probably going to hear me reference my dad a few thousand times. But uh, I remember there was a time in my life when I was messed up and I was messed up bad. And I was so scared to tell my daddy. So scared. A couple of things happened, Brother Billy. First thing is, as I told him, second thing is he got mad at me. Not because I, what I did, but because I was so scared to tell him. And then he told me something. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget where we were. There's a little house on a little back road kind of over by Bernie off of 153. It's got a round window in the front of it, about that big. Faces the road. That's where we were, Brother David, when my dad told me I'm the best friend you got in the whole world. Because Brother Billy, he never did tell me just what I wanted to hear. He just told me the way it was. And I've told people before, I miss Daddy, not because of the advice he would give, but because he would tell me what to do. And there's a difference. Advice is something that you just get from somebody and then you decide whether you want to do it that way or not. When somebody just lays the map out in front of you and you know that's the right way. And it works. Man's friend. Sweetness of a man's friend by hearty counsel. I used to have an old tape, cassette tape. Uh, and... Uh, I got a great, great wife, but, and we're great friends, but there are some things we don't agree on. And I'm going to talk about that in just a little bit, but that's not against the law. Do you know that? Amen. It really makes me sick at my stomach to people that just, I had a man tell me one time I have to agree with him. Well, no, I don't. But I like old country gospel music. And... 
uh, I had me a cassette tape that one side of it was Willie Nelson, gospel music, and the other side was Merle Haggard, gospel music. And my good buddy, Brother Merle, sang a song that says, uh, Once I stood in the night with my head bowed low. How many of you know that one? In darkness as black as the sea. Huh? Y'all remember that? The title of that song is Where No One Stands Alone. And it, there's a line of it that said there's nothing worse than being alone. Now here's the deal. Is we got to be honest with that knowledge. We got to want to be friends. Okay, we got to realize being alone stinks. And I and I say that from 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 and my wife will also tell you this and my mama will too that I, brother David I like to be alone. Okay? But being alone stinks. Because after about a day and a half of it, I want my family home. I want some noise. I want my wife. I want my kids back underneath me. Okay? Because, Brother Billy, that's not the way to be. Okay? Friends, friendships involve mutual improvement. Proverbs 27 and 17 says, Iron sharpeneth iron. Y'all know what that means, don't you? We don't have to do that quite so much anymore. But I remember when Grandpa would sharpen the bean hooks and he would sharpen the, the hole and stuff. Now, I guess you still do it if you, if you use that. But he, he used a file to do it, Brother Pete. Iron sharpeneth iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Disagreement, I want you to listen to me. There's a difference in disagreeing and being disagreeable. Do I need to explain that? Disagreeable people disagree just on a matter of principle. You know as soon as you talk to them about something, they're going to disagree because they're disagreeable. And here's what you generally have to do is you have to make them think it's their idea and then it's a good idea. Right? But disagreeing is healthy. Disagreement is healthy. Because we... Now listen to me. There is some kind of... Uh, uh, negative vibe or something going on in especially this particular area that there is an aura that says that if we disagree we can't be friends. We, we, we got to learn brother Billy that we can disagree but you and I are still friends. Okay? And disagreement what it does instead of making you angry let it make you start thinking. Uh-huh. Okay, even if it's about something as strong as doctrine, Brother Pete, if somebody disagrees and somebody says we're wrong, Brother Billy, I've got to find some more scriptures. Okay, instead, i tell you what. No, do do y'all understand? We automatically get on the defensive when somebody disagrees with us. Okay? But we need, we need disagreement. Always being in agreement is not healthy because there's no motivation to learn or get better if everything is always okay, 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 okay. I'll agree, I'll agree, I'll agree. Well, first off, if you don't agree, you're lying. But that's where the Holy Ghost kicks in and you have a right spirit. Okay, it happened to me today. I had somebody call me that disagreed with something that I thought until I began to tell them this, 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 this. And he said, when you, when you, and this is tell you a little bit, he said, when you present it to the church, you need to tell them everything you just told me because it totally changes the way I viewed it. Okay? 
When, when, there's facts, there's things, but but I, I remember Brother Shannon remembers him well, and, and he may have had his his downfalls. But we had a plant manager named Danny Coyle at, at Caterpillar, and you know something, Brother Billy, he 